we're All live. Right, we're live on Facebook. We can begin service. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We come blessing the wonderful name of Jesus for this is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. It is Sunday morning and we declare God's glory on today. Amen. We come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We will now have our morning worship from the deacon board, official board, Deacon Troy Bird, Deacon Reginald Wells, and Deacon Lewis Lee is going to um, lead our worship experience on this morning. Amen. So let us worship. Okay, deacons, unmute yourselves so we can worship. All right, amen. 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 So amen. Bless the wonderful name Bless of the Jesus. Wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, Bert. We certainly thank God for loving us and keeping us sustaining us. So it, it just appears to me that uh I used to sing a few verses of this song. None but the righteous. Yeah. None but the righteous. None but the righteous. Safety God. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water to be baptized. I know I got religion. I know I got religion. I know I got religion, cause I've been baptized, I've been baptized. Sometimes I sing about it, sometimes I pray about it, sometimes I preach about it. I know I got religion, I know I got religion. Amen. I'll be reading the scripture this morning. Ephesians, starting at the first chapter, starting at the 15th verse. I just want to say good morning to our Facebook family and our Manala family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be starting at the 15th verse. Amen. Amen. For this reason, Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God, our Lord, Jesus Christ, your glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the holy people, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is involved, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. 
And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. I have read Ephesians, the first chapter, starting at the 15th verse. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lord, as once and again, a few of us have gathered together, Lord, just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you because of your goodness. We thank you because of your mercy. We thank you because of your kindness. We thank you because you haven't dealt with us according to our sins, but bright and early this morning, you allowed us to get on the Zoom. You allowed us to pick up the phone. You gave us yes. the to do all the things that you would have us to do on this day. Lord, we thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And Lord, as we go on this Christian journey, our feet might get dirty a little bit, Lord, but Lord, we know that you are able to wash us clean. And Lord, we just thank you for most of all for forgiving us of all of our sins in word, deed, and in thought. And Lord, all those things that we do that's not according to your word, we ask you to forgive us. And Lord, as we go into this service, Lord, we ask you to come into the midst of us that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, that someone might come by and say, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, we just thank you. We pray for our sick and shut in, our bereaved family all over this nation. We ask you to touch this world, oh Lord, you know what's going on. We ask you to touch the president of this United States, oh Lord. You know the situation and the circumstances that we're going through. Lord, we just love you so much. And Lord, we can't do nothing without you. These and other blessings we do ask in your son, Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Amen amen, amen. 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 We just amen. Thank, we thank God just for another opportunity to come together on the Zoom. We thank God that it could have been the other way. All right. We didn't have All to right. wake up this morning. But because yes, of his mercy and grace, he gave us another chance. So we just ask you to continue to be with us as we go throughout the devotion. I'm going to try to sing this song. And it talks about the Lord giving out blessings and healings. And Amen. we don't want him to do it without us. All right. So, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Right. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. I said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, Please don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing, healing in the season, please don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. I said, Lord, if you're healing, healing in the season, please don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. I said, Lord, if you're blessing, blessing in the season, Please don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. I said, Lord, if you're blessing, blessing in the season, please don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. I said, Lord, Whatever you're doing in the season, please don't do it without me. Oh, Lord, don't do it without me. I said, don't do it without me. 
If you're healing, don't do it without me. If you're blessing, don't do it without me. If you're healing, don't do it without me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. God, whatever you are doing yes. in this season, we don't want you to do it without us. We just give God all the glory. We give him all the honor and we give him all the praise. For we now come into agreement with the heavens to declare God's glory on this morning. Amen. 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 We thank that we were not defeated throughout last weekend, last week, but God made us victorious and he made us more than a conqueror on today. So we give God all the glory. We give him all the honor and we give him all the praise for God doeth all things well. And we come this morning to worship God. We've been, I don't know about some people, but I've been shut in all week long. I have not stepped out of my door one day last week. And I thank God for bringing me to this appointed time. We are in this morning. We are shut in, but we are not shut out. So we're going to praise God on this morning for his many blessings. For God has truly been good to us. Some people didn't make it through last week, but we made it through last week. And we said, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And God, we give you all the praise for you are worthy of our praise. And we might be virtually virtual on this morning, yet we can still give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We magnify you. We exalt you. And we give you all the glory. For God, we declare that you are good. And we bless your name on today. Hallelujah. I come to magnify the Lord. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to worship the Lord on this morning. For God is good. He is faithful. And we give him all the praise. Bless you, Lord. At this time, I'm going to call forth our church clerk, Sister so, uh, Okay. to um, give us Can some of on today that we may know what is going on in the midst of us being shut in, but not shut out. Amen? Amen. Hear ye the church clerk. Good morning. Good morning, my knowledge family. Good morning. Good. 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 Pleasure to be worshiping with a church family this morning and joining us from Zoom, Facebook Live. Today is June 14th, 2020, and it's Sunday. And first, I want to give reference to the Spirit and give honor to our interim pastor, Priscilla M. Joyner, and all other members and friends. Good morning again. The thought of the week there could be no keener revelation of a society soul than the way it treats its children, Nelson Mandela. Children are a heritage from God, offspring a reward from him. Like ours in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Psalm chapter 127, verses three to five. The theme for June, pursuing the path to red peace. So then let us pursue the things which make for peace and the building of one another. Happy birthday, hoping you are blessed with limitless happiness as you celebrate the anniversary of your birth. May you inherit long life, prosperity, and all that God has in store for those who love and serve them. Happy birthday to all celebrating your birthday this week from your church family. Happy birthday, special shout outs to Sister Tamara Smith, Brother James Robinson, and Brother Lamar Tucker. May God bless you with many more. From our church bulletin and community board, COV-19 testing is still being provided in Jersey City. The number is provided in your bulletin and the hours are 9 to 5 p.m. You have to call to schedule an appointment. Jersey City also has a 24-hour hotline with COVID-19. That number is also provided in your bulletin. Jersey City Census 2020. If you have not filled out your census, please do so. It's important 
for the funding of the city. You can do you file your census online, by phone, or by mail. Vote by mail ballot. Your vote is your voice. Because of a current health crisis, voting will be done by mail and ballot. The June primary has been scheduled to July 7, 2020. Your ballot is scheduled to arrive by mid-June. Remember to fill it out and return your ballot back on time. If you have any questions, call the Hudson County Board of Elections. Announcements, bereavements. The MOBC family extends love, concern, and heartfelt sympathy and condolences to the following families. Sister Alice Gordine and family and the loss of her beloved son, Brother William Frankie Gordon of Baltimore, Maryland. Our private burial service is scheduled for Brother Gordine on Monday, June 15, 2020 in Baltimore, Maryland. The family is listening our prayers. Today we are streaming worship service on Facebook God Live. We also have a dedicated telephone line connected to the service for those who are prefer to call into the worship service. Pray for my love as God order our steps forward into the future. Amen. Iron sharp, sharp, sharpens iron. Tuesday night Bible study is back. And dial into the old MOBC conference line at 7 p.m. sharp. Tuesday, bring your Bible and let's study God's word together. Wednesday noonday prayer and Thursday night prayer meeting is, is back also. And that also can be done through the old MOBC prayer line conference number. All New Jersey residents are required to wear masks or face covering when entering any public building or establishment or very own. Our very own Sister Will and Mae Johnson is designing specialty masks for purchase. Anyone interested in purchasing a mask can call her at 201-936-2782. Sister Will and Mae Johnson is from the Usher's unit. Stay safe, stay connected, register your personal email address with the church to get the latest news or get a copy of the weekly church bulletin. Register your email address at mobcnj400 at gmail.com. Remember to pray for our sick and shut in, those in hospital rehabilitation, convalescing and nursing home, and those on the prayer list. And I wanna give a special announcement our sister Nyree Magwood is home. God bless, God bless. Please continue to pray for her and lift her up in prayer as she continues on her journey of recovery. And these are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Thank you. Amen. We just bless the wonderful name of Jesus for our church clerk, Sister Dorothy Jackson. And we ask that you would govern yourselves according to all the announcements that has been read and if there's any concerns or issue and you need to speak with um, any one concerning anything, you are free to call the me, the interim pastor, the ministerial staff, the deacons and the trustees. And all of our numbers are listed on the back of your church bulletin. And for all of us, all of those who have saved your old church bulletins, our numbers are yet on the back of those bulletins that you can reach out to us at any given time. We are here to serve you within the ministry. We bless God for you, you, and you. We would like to take this opportunity to bless all the giving, the finances that has been coming into the house of God for the Mount Isle Baptist Church, all the tithers, those who are paying their dues, those who are sowing seeds into the ministry. We thank you for your financial success and your financial blessings to the Mount Isle Baptist Church. And we at this time offer up those gifts unto the Lord. And we declare God's word on today that in Luke 6 38, it says, as we give, it is given to us, good measured, pressed down and shaken together and running over. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed going in 
and we are blessed going out. We are blessed rising up and we are blessed lying down. And we thank God for his financial blessings to the Mount Olive Baptist Church. For the blessings of the Lord truly makes us rich and it adds no sorrow. We say thank you, thank you, thank you for your gifts unto the Lord. And God will repay. Amen. We thank you for supporting the ministry and giving your finance to the church. We are blessed because you are blessed. And God has truly blessed us all. And we give him thanks on this morning. It is now that time that we go to the Lord in prayer and we bring all of our supplications before the Lord and we are going to the altar. We are not physically at the church, but you still can come to the altar that we may pray for you on this morning. So those who would like to bow before the Lord on this morning, you can still bow before the Lord and you can make your altar at home as we go to the throne of grace on this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we just come before thee, O oh gracious and mighty God. And we come this morning declaring that you are the God of our salvation and that our trust and our hope is in you. So Lord, here we are bowing down before you, oh God, entering into your presence on this morning. God, we just want to say thank you on this morning. We thank you, oh God, for our lying down on last night. And Lord God, we thank you for our early rising on this morning. That God, you woke us up and we was opened in our right minds on this morning. God, you gave us a portion of our health and our strength. And for this, God, we want to say thank you. God, we thank you, Lord. And we exalt you on this morning for God, you are worthy of our praise. So now, Lord, as we bow at the altar, and Lord God, as we lift up all of our petitions and we make our requests known unto you, oh God, we ask that you would hearken to our cry on this morning. And God, you will hear our voice as we sup before you, oh God. God, we thank you for this day that you have made, a day that we have never seen before and a day that we shall never see again. And we say, thank you, God, for you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And God, we declare that you are the God of our salvation and that our hope is in you. So Father, as we come before your throne, God, we say thank you. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning and your grace has been sufficient for us. And Lord God, as we come on this day, that we celebrate children and we call it Children's Day. As we honor our children on today, oh God, we lift up our children before you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we come praying for their lives on today, God. We say thank you, oh God, that you have kept them in the midst of every turmoil, in the midst of every struggle, in the midst of every test, that you have kept them with a perfect mind on today. So God, we say thank you for our children, oh God, for they are our children of today and they are our children for tomorrow. So God, we ask a special blessing upon our children on this morning. God, we ask that you would touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, oh God. We ask you, oh God, that you would stretch their minds, that you would stretch their thinkings, oh God, that they would have big dreams, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you would have mercy upon them in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger, oh God. Lord God, as we lift them up, we say not our will, but that thine will will be done in their lives, oh God, as we declare Jeremiah 29 and 11, for you know the plans that you have for them, oh God. Plans not to hurt or to harm them, but plans to give them an expected life 
and an expected end. So God, we ask that you would have mercy upon them on today, oh God. We ask that you would stretch their minds, that you would stretch their thinkings, oh God, that you would take them out of the box, oh God, that you would instill within, within them, oh God, and that you would let them know that they could be all that they hope to be, that they could be all that they dream to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you would not take your hands from off them, oh God, but you will guard them and that you would keep them in perfect peace. God, we ask a blessing over the parents in the mighty name of Jesus. But Lord God, we know that parenting is not easy, oh God. Some want to bail out, some want to give up, some want to throw in the towel, oh God. But we decree and declare your blessing over the family in the mighty name of Jesus, your institution over families in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will not, that we will live and not die, oh God, that we will declare the works of the Lord. We bless you because you are good. We bless you because you're kind. We bless you because you're matchless, oh God. You're an awesome God. And we give you the praise on today. For Lord God, you have done exceedingly above all that we could ever imagine or think. And God, we thank you for keeping us. We thank you, oh God, for not removing your hand from upon us. And in this, we give you praise. In this, God, we give you glory. In this, we give you all the honor, God, because you are worthy of our praise. Thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Thank you for being the bridge over troubled water. Thank you for being our mountaintop. God, we thank you for you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Bless us as only you can bless us, oh God, and keep us as only you can keep us, God. We thank you for your love on this morning. Thank you for your joy on this morning. Thank you for your hope on this morning. God, someone who is, 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 is want to give up on this morning, we lift them up before you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, asking that you would touch them that you would deliver them, that you would heal them, that you would comfort them, that you would strengthen them, oh God, and that you would help them in this most critical time and difficult time of their lives, oh God, for our hope and trust is in you. Can God do it? Yes, he can. Will God do it? Yes, he will. God, we ask in Jesus' name that you would help us. We ask in Jesus' name that you would protect us. We ask in Jesus' name that you would keep us and that you would hold us in the hollow of your hand. God, bless now thou your people. Let them know that there is no failure in God and that you can do the impossible for all things are possible through Christ Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. And Lord God, we give you praise. And we declare as your word, John 14 and 14 declare, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So God, we ask that you would do it for us as we trust you on today, that your word will never return unto you void, but it shall accomplish everything that you have sent it forth to accomplish. And we believe your word to be true. It is in Jesus Christ, we pray, your son, Yeshua, amen and thank you. God. Now let all of God's believers that believe that God hears our prayer shout hallelujah on this morning and give God the glory that is due unto him. Hallelujah. 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 God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
You are worthy of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who might be struggling on today, but Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are working it out for their good. Thank you, Jesus, that you are comforting them. Thank you, Jesus, that you have not given up on them. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. The enemy would have us to close our mouth, but God, we shall. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Only you, God. You already know. And we thank you, God. Thank you that you are our deliverer. Thank you that you are our keeper. Thank you, Lord, that you are our helper. Thank you, Lord, that you are our defender. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is fighting for us. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. That we are shut in, but we are not shut out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I don't know who I'm feeling in my spirit, but, now, but no matter what you are going through, don't you give up. Know that God fights for you. You might be in a struggle. You might be in a test. You might be in a crisis. You might be in a storm. But God sees you wherever you're at. And God is fighting for you. Don't you give up but you hang on in there and you see what the end is going to be. God got you. No matter how difficult it might be, I want you to know God got you and he's not going to let you go. So you be encouraged and you hang on in there because God is going to bring you through more than a conqueror because you win. God is with you. At this time, we're going to have our sister Carlotta Haynes to come to give us a solo on this morning, a song of praise before we hear the word of God on this morning. That's going to be brought by our brother, the phenomenal, auspicious man of God, Reverend Eldridge Rodney is going to break the bread of life to us on this morning. And we give God for his gift. We give God for the, give God praise for the work of his hand on this morning. I see you, my sister Carlotta, and girl, you look good. Hallelujah. God bless you. And God you can you. grace us with a song on this morning. Praise the Lord. God praise bless you. Lord. God bless you all. It's good to still be in the land of the living. Yes. And worshiping with my family this morning. Just a short verse. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. Oh, but when I looked around and I think things over, all of my good days 
has outweighed my bad days. And I won't, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. It's not always good. And we can hardly see the road. We ask the question, Lord, pandemic, pandemic, why, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they cannot see. But I'll still say, thank you, Lord. And I won't, I won't complain. Let me tell you why. Because God has been good to me. How about you? He, he's been so good to me. More than this world or you could ever be. He's been so good to me. He's dried all of my tears away. And he's turned my midnights into day. So I'll simply say, thank you, Lord. And I won't, I won't complain. I'm gonna say it one more time. How about you? For God has been good to me. He, he's been so good to me. More than this world or you could ever be he's been so good to me he's dried all of my tears away and he's turned my midnights into day for that we'll just say Thank you, Lord. And we won't, we won't complain. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless the, name. Bless the Lord. We won't complain. Hallelujah. God has truly been too good to us. At this time, we're going to have Reverend Eldridge Rodney to break the bread of life on this morning. Let's, uh, let us receive him with a hearty, say, preacher, preach. Go ahead and preach the word, my brother. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. How are we doing? God bless you all. It's good to see everybody. It's always good to be on the call, but to see some of us face to face is an extra blessing. Amen? So God bless you. I promise not to be before you long. I'd like to direct you to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. We're going to begin at verse 55. I have a few verses uh, in 1 Samuel, and then we're going to move to 2 Samuel, but uh, we're going to begin with 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 55. And I'm going to give you a few minutes to get there because I want you to see it for yourself. I don't want you to just hear it. I want you to see it for yourself. What the word of God, of Yahweh says. Amen. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17. We're going to begin at verse 55. I'm going to read the New International Version because I think for the text, for my word this morning, the New International Version breaks it down. But clearly... Uh, any version that you read is fine. Amen. And we're going to begin in verse 55. 
As Saul watched David going out to meet the Philistine, he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is that young man? Abner replied, as surely as you live, your majesty, I don't know. The king said, King Saul said, find out whose son this man is. Verse 57, as soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with David still holding the Philistine, Goliath's head. Verse 58, whose son are you, young man? Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. Now let's go on to 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. The King James Version reads, he loved him as his own soul. Verse 2, from that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. Verse 3, and Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. He loved him as his own soul. Verse four, Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt. Now let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30. I'm going to give you a second to get there. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30. We're still in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30 reads, Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse and rebellious woman. Don't I know that you have sided with the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of the mother who bore you? Last verse, 2 Samuel chapter 1. Let's go there. 2 Samuel chapter 1. This is the last verse, verse 26. Let's go to the next book over. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 26. I'm going to give you a second to get there. I want you to see it for yourself. Second Samuel chapter one, verse 26 reads in the NIV version. I still see some people turning and I hear some people turning. So I'm going to wait because I want you to see it for yourself. We ain't in a rush, right, Pastor? I got a minute or two. I promise not to be before you long. Amen. So 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 26 reads in the NIV version. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of women. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you right now in, in, for the company and the power of your spirit that you have given us the technology that I may see my brothers and sisters and they may hear my voice and I hear them. Father, that's a miracle. That would have been a miracle in the first century church. And in the 21st century church, it's still a miracle. So I thank you for opening up the doors for us to love one another, to hear one another, to see one another. In other countries, they don't have this freedom. They can't just stand on the corner with a Bible and worship. We can. So we thank you for the freedom and the liberties that we have. Even in the pandemic, racial pandemic state. Father, we thank you for what we have. We are most grateful. And Father, we say all these things in your son, Yahshua's good and majestic name, the one Christ, the door, the way, the truth, the life, the good shepherd, the holy man. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. 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 Okay, so from the text, we see that Saul, King Saul, didn't know who David was when he killed Goliath. David met Saul when David was holding the head of Goliath in his hand. Abner, the commander of Saul's, King Saul's army, said, who is this boy? And so when he did, Saul met David. David was still holding Goliath's head in his hand. That's what the text just told us. Which means Saul's son, Jonathan, did not know David either. 
But then jealousy set in, and as we all know, and I didn't read this in the text, but Saul, King Saul, eventually got jealous of David, right? And he desired to kill him. And it was jealousy because the people were praising David more than they had praised for Saul. Amen? But the text tells us that Jonathan loved David as his own soul. And I be reads, Jonathan loved David as himself. So I'm going to title this word today, he loved him as himself. He loved him as his own soul. That's agape love. This is before Christ, right? Jonathan went against tradition. He went against his father, Saul, who wanted to kill David. And he went against his own lineage because by earthly lineage, Jonathan was in line to be the next king, not David. We know that God anointed David to be king. But at this point, Saul didn't know that and Jonathan didn't know that, right? So Jonathan went against what his father desired, and he went against his own lineage in that he took off of his garment and gave it to David. Amen? So he had no knowledge. They had no knowledge at this point of what God had done. So through Jonathan and through King Saul, we see both love and the lack of love. Don't we? Jonathan is showing love by loving David as himself, loving David as his own soul. And King Saul is showing the lack of love by being jealous, which led him trying to kill David. So are we showing that agape love in the church? The same agape love that Jonathan was showing? You know, my, my, my sermons rarely talk about the people outside. We already know what the world is doing. My concern and God's concern, because judgment first starts at the house of the Lord. As you know, we just had a big cleansing, right? A lot of, a lot of people will, you know, put out. The Lord put a lot of riffraff out. And so, but so judgment first starts at the house of the Lord. We know what the world is showing. We're seeing it play out right before our eyes on TV. There's a Amen. clear lack of love, right? When Officer Chauvin put his knee on the neck of George Floyd after having subdued him shows a lack of love. Amen? But the word tells us that Jonathan loved David as himself. When the father and son vigilantes in Georgia hunted down and shot Ahmaud Arbery was a demonstration of a lack of love. Mm -hmm. The word tells us that Jonathan loved David as himself. So what are we doing in the church? When the officers stormed into the home of Breonna Taylor and killed her without knocking or announcing themselves, only to learn that they were in the wrong place, killing the wrong person, that was the pinnacle of the lack of love. The word tells us that Jonathan loved David as himself, loved David as his own soul. For the president to have even considered to have his first presidential campaign rally on June 19th, June 19, 2020, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a lack of love. Juneteenth, as we all know, June 19, 1865 is when the last slaves were emancip emancipated, right? The word had gotten down to Texas, one of the farther southern states. Even though the war had ended two years before in 1863, they didn't get the word until 1865. There was no internet. There was no postal service. There was no telephone. So the word eventually got down to them in Texas in 1865, which is why we celebrate Juneteenth. June 19th, 1865, because that's when the last of the slaves were emancipated. Even yeah. though the Civil War had ended two years before in 1863, the last of the slaves didn't know that until 1865. So African-Americans celebrate Juneteenth. So the president decides to have his rally, presidential campaign rally, on Juneteenth. That's a lack of love. So much of a lack of, and in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there's a history in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So not only was he going to have it in on Juneteenth, he was going to have it in Tulsa, Oklahoma at 99 years ago in 1921 was the worst white on black massacre 
in the history of the country. Wow. Apparently, they call this strip of land or this strip, this, these, these neighborhood blocks that blacks lived in that were very affluent, the Black Wall Street. So white people got jealous, so they killed about 300 black people. So the president decides to have his presidential campaign rally on Juneteenth in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wink, wink, dog whistle to the white supremacists. That's a lot to love. So much so he backtracked that, right? That would have been a double whammy. So the president has decided to hold his first rally on June 20th, the day after. Still in Tulsa, though. Still in Tulsa. Why am I telling you this? Because it shows a lack of love. I already know what the world is doing. You know it too. You see it on television every day. But the word tells us that Jonathan loved David as himself. Jonathan loved David as his own soul. So we know what the world is doing and we know what Jonathan did. But what are we doing in the church? Amen. We're supposed to be the example to the world of how to have relationship with God and to each other. Yes, Lord. How can we demonstrate to the world how to love one another if we have trouble loving each other in the body of Christ? Amen. We are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Individually, think of yourself as a light bulb. So every time you walk outside your house, you a light bulb, right? Lighting up the darkness. But if your light bulb is out, and then when you go into the darkness, you become part of the darkness. Amen. Jonathan loved David as himself. Collectively, as the body of Christ, we are to be lighting that darkness in the world that I just described. Amen. Are we getting it right? First in the church. You know, we're supposed to test this amongst ourselves and then we That's go right. outside right. into the world. So if we fail in the test amongst ourselves, then we can't possibly light up the world outside. And we know Amen. that the world is in a lot of turmoil as we speak. I refuse to enter the pulpit with any type of malice in my heart. Amen. Not happening. I'm going to tell you a story, and I come out looking pretty bad in it, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. One Sunday morning, during Sunday school devotion, Deacon Wells came to me and asked me a question. Simple question. And, you know, I had a hard week at work today, the week before, and I, the next week, that coming week, would promise to be just as difficult thing. I was in church, but my mind was not there. And so, I answered him flippantly and kind of wagged him, flagged him away. And um, he and I got into a little discussion, you know, right there. And it's doing devotion, right? So the whole congregation is not there. So it's doing the devotion before Sunday school. And so um, we kind of raised our voices. So people kind of knew that we were disagreeing about something. They didn't know what, but they knew that there was a disagreement amongst ourselves, amongst the brethren. And so I took my place in my Sunday school class, and he was going downstairs to take care of his class. And before he went downstairs, I'll never forget it. All he, he said to me, all I did was ask you a question. And so the whole while, so, this, so now we're in Sunday school. He's downstairs teaching his class. I'm upstairs teaching my class, and the Holy Spirit is beating me up. I'm being uh -oh. convicted. The Holy Spirit is poking me. What's wrong with you? You just insulted the, your first friend in the church. First friend in the church. Did I ever tell you that story? I think I have. When I first came to the church 15 years ago, I didn't know anybody. I walked into Bible study, and one person extended his hand, and that was Deacon Wells. He said, hey, brother, how you doing? I said, how you doing? He said, uh, he explained to me the, the Sunday school layout. He said, you know, in this classroom is Sister Richburg, and in this class is Brother Gamble, was Reverend Gamble, rather, who was living at the time. 15 years ago, this was. He says, and you can go to each, any class you want to go to. And I said, where are you going? And he says, well, I'm going to Sister Richburg's class. I said, well, I'm going to follow you. Mm -hmm. 
And I followed him around like a puppy dog for years, you know. This is before I was any type of any type of leader in the church. So now, 15 years later, now I'm insulting him because I'm in a bad mood. So after fast forward now, flash forward now. So now I'm convicted teaching my class after having insulted Deacon Wells. Now I'm a I'm a minister at the times before I was ordained as a reverend. So after class, I can't wait to get downstairs to apologize. And which I did. I went downstairs and I hugged him. I said, Deacon Wells, I'm so sorry. You know, I kind of like had a bad week at work. But what he doesn't know, when I came up back upstairs, this is before the review of Sunday school, just to give you a frame of reference of where we are in the church, before the review of Sunday school. So this is before the 11 o'clock service. When I came back upstairs, I went off to a room after, after he accepted, graciously accepted my apology. I went upstairs and I went off to a room and wept. I wept at my, the disappointment in my own behavior. Why am I telling you this story? Things will flare up, but as quickly as they can become inflamed, we can quench them right away. Amen? That's what God does for us. Jesus forgives us. Deacon Wells graciously forgave me. We haven't had a problem since then. But it's very important that we treat one another with agape love within the church before we go outside of the church. Disagreements will happen. Situations will arise. We already know that. Arguments will come up. But as quickly as they come up, we can quench them and squash them right away. But you've got to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. I could not Amen. feel comfortable after my conversation with him before my Sunday school class. The whole Sunday school hours, I was in turmoil within myself, convicted by the Holy Spirit that I even allowed this to happen. All he did was ask me a question. Amen? So if that could happen to me, a minister, not like I said, I come up looking pretty bad in this story. But that's why I'm using it, because if that can happen to me, it certainly can happen to you. And so we have to be on God. The Holy Spirit did a wonderful cleansing of our church. Cleansing. We should now be living in bliss and harmony. The trouble now is gone. We still got trouble? What's the problem now? We got a problem now still? He just cleansed out everything. We still got a problem? We should not be having a problem with one another. And the word tells us that Jonathan loved David as himself. Jonathan loved David as his own soul. Is our need to be right greater than our desire to rightly represent Christ in the world? Should not be. Right? It should not be. Jonathan had every right to say, oh, no, who's the David guy? No, he ain't taking my place. I'm next in line to be king. But he didn't. He took off his robe and gave it to David. Wasn't Word doesn't tell us that he had revelation knowledge either. He just did it. Amen? And that's the way we need to be with one another. He's, he was gracious to David. Deacon Wells was gracious to me. Christ is gracious to us all. I'm going to leave you with these last verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not yeah, envy. Yeah. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen? God bless you. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. We bless the wonderful name of Jesus and we thank God for our brother, Reverend Rodney, who broke the bread of life on this morning, who told us that God loves us just as we are. Yes. Isn't that beautiful to know that God loves us just as we are? Yeah. You know, sometimes we have to put on ears for people to love us or show somebody what we're really not, what we're really not. But God loves us even in the good part of who we are, even in the worst part of who we are. 
God loves us just the same. Amen. Yes, amen. And we thank God for the word of God on this morning and for our brother breaking the word of life to us on today. And with the word of God that has been spoken on this morning, we extend the invitation for anyone who might be out of the ark of safety that you may become into that you may come into God's safety on this morning. We know we know that we are virtually having church and you can virtually join the body of Christ on this morning. God extends that invitation to you. He opens his arms wide open saying unto you to come and to and he will take you just as you are and he loves you just as you are. So we yeah. extend that invitation to you on this morning for anyone who want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. For, for in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And God wants for us to have everlasting life. So the invitation is extended to you that you will receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Those who are out of the ark of safety, we extend to you a safety net that you can come into the household of faith on today. Amen. And Amen. God just saying, open your heart and let him in and he will come and sup with you. Amen. So that invitation is extended to you. Those who have turned away from God, God still extends that invitation to you today that you may repent of your sins and that you would turn around and come back to God. Amen. And those who do not have a church home, who may be visiting from another city or state and, and have arrived into our city, God extends that invitation to you as well. There's a whole lot of services that are on virtual Zoom, Facebook Live, and so there's many avenues that you can hear the word of God. You can hear the word of God that's on the television. Amen. So God still extends that hand to you as well, that you would come to him, that you would follow Jesus. Amen. So the doors, the door of the Lord is open to you. We're not in a church, but the church doors, we're not open. But God is open to receive you just where you are. Amen. Amen. So we bless the wonderful name of Jesus for this Sunday of worship. And for those that I can see on Zoom, it's good to see you. Amen. And it's good to be seen. Amen. We, we, um, we miss corporate worship where we can come together, we can hug and we can fellowship, and we can love on one another. But we thank God for, for the new technologies of 2020 in this 21st century, that we could do Zoom, that we could do Facebook Live, that we could do conference calls in order for us to connect with one another. And we thank God for all of those resources that we have on today. It is our prayer that you were blessed by our worship experience during virtual service on this morning. It is our prayer that something has been said that you can take with you, that you can hide in your heart, amen, that will strengthen you for the week that is ahead of you. As the interim pastor of the Mount Olive Baptist Church, I want to say to the membership at large that we would take wisdom and that we would keep our ear to God's mouth and to God's heart, that we would follow the standards for the COVID-19, that if you don't have to go out, that you would not go out, and that when you do need to go out, that you would take your mask with you, that you would protect others as well as protect yourself. 
I know everything is about to open up on the 15th. That's tomorrow. Everything is about to open up and it's getting hot. And people believe that it's time for them to bust out. But I want you to know that COVID-19 is still upon the earth. Don't be fooled, but that you would use godly wisdom and that you would pray, that you would seek God's face and that we would abide to the standards and the codes that have been placed in position for this coronavirus because coronavirus cases are still happening every day. On Monday and Thursday, Monday, no, Friday, I believe it was like 563 new cases. And on Thursday, it was like 600 and something new cases and people are still dying. And it is believed that there's gonna be a second wind that's gonna come of COVID-19. So don't be fooled by people telling you that it's okay for you to go about and do things like it was because nothing will ever be like it was before. We're in a new normal, we're in a new way of doing things and we must pray and seek God's face that we would be safe, that our families would be safe and that until God heals the land, amen? First Chronicles 7, 14, you know what that word says? Anybody know what that word says? Anybody know what's, what First Chronicle, what is First, Con, First Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name, that's the scripture I'm talking about. And we need, we need to seek God's face that God will heal the land, amen? But we're not going to be scared and we're not going to be afraid, but we're going to move by the power and the anointing of God. Amen. Because God is still yet alive. God is still moving. God is still working. Amen. And we can still see the hand of God because God's hand is still present upon this world and upon this nation. And we just waiting in the Lord for God's healing, amen? So we who have elderly parents, we're gonna make ourselves available to our parents to do what we need to do for them, amen? For we are young and at their age, their health may be compromised, but we're gonna do what God is requiring for us to do in this season, that we may be safe and that some of us, most of us will not die out through this COVID-19, amen? There's a number of people that there will be death from the COVID of 19, but there is also a number of people that is not gonna die from COVID-19, amen? God knows the number, we don't, but God knows the number, amen? And we're gonna trust God through this pandemic. We're gonna trust God through this critical time and difficult time that we are in and we're going to wait in God. Amen. So it is my prayer that you have been blessed and that the blessings of the Lord will cover you during this time and this season that we are in. I don't know about anybody else, but I know that I'm blessed. You know you're blessed. Amen. We are blessed. I'm going to ask them to unmute all of the lines. Amen. To um, to unmute all of the lines amen we are blessed yes we are blessed and we give god glory amen amen and as we look to the lord to be dismissed on this morning we thank god for everything that our ears have heard we thank god for what our eyes was able to see and we rest in the peace of the lord that we would have peace in this difficult time that we are in. And we say, Lord, we love you. We love God, you, Lord. we give you all the glory. We give you yes. all the honor. And Lord God, we give you all the praise. For Lord God, you do us all things well. God, we ask that you will continue to bless us, that you will continue to keep us, and that you will keep, continue to show forth your love 
upon us. And God, we ask that as you dismiss us from this virtual worship service, but never from your presence. And may the peace of God be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, we give you glory. Let all of God's people shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Throughout this week. Amen. Amen. We cover Mother Gordine as yes, she's Lord. looking to travel on tomorrow morning okay. to um to give her final farewell well to her son Willie mm. Gord William <laughs> Gordine William Frankie Gordine. Mm. Amen. So mm. we're gonna cover Sister Gordine during her time of sorrow and in her time of hurt and pain and the loss of her oldest son. Amen. So Amen. everybody that you will remember Sister Gordine on tomorrow and tonight in your prayers, that she would have traveling mercies, that the spirit of the Lord will go before her. Amen. Protect Amen. her, take her to um, Baltimore, Maryland safe, and that she would have a safe return. Amen. 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 So bless the Lord. God bless you and go in your week and take God with you. Amen. 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 Bless I'll the call Lord. You in a minute.